Funding for FAIR 2022 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... For more than 110 years, EMC Insurance Companies has served policyholders, independent agents, and local communities, providing insurance products for both business and life. Count on EMC. I am Kevin Rasmussen, and I am a pig farmer. We feel a deep responsibility to protect our environment and ensure sustainability. I think it's important to share our story and that others know that we're always striving to do better. Saturday night and welcome to the grand finale of FAIR 2022 and oh baby do we have a great lineup of highlights for you tonight. Sharpen your pencils for a friendly botanical battle at the agriculture building and we'll get ready to laugh or <laughs> maybe groan a little bit as kids take the stage at Pioneer Hall for the joke telling contest and hold on tight for a test of endurance and strength. Monster arm wrestling. But first, Abby Brown is going to introduce us to some time that they set aside for folks with autism and sensory processing disorders to help them explore and enjoy the fair. Many flock to the fair for the big sounds and the bright lights. But for some, the fair is far more enjoyable when the lights are dim and the sounds are softer. And so for that crowd, for the first time ever, the fair has a sensory friendly morning. Oh, okay. 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 All right, Emily, tell us about sensory friendly morning at the fair. Anybody can come, but we are providing programming that's more designed for those on our sensory friendly spectrum to experience the fair in kind of a calmer, more relaxing setting. So we have lots of partners that help us here at the fair to put this on and we have various activities in multiple locations across the fairgrounds. Terry, talk to us about what sensory processing means and how different people process sensory stimulation differently. All of us are bombarded with light, sound, movement, all kinds of sensory inputs. Some people have a harder time processing all of that input to where they can still function despite everything coming in. Missy, tell me about your family. Yeah, so my husband and I have two boys. This is Roman, he's 10 years old, and this is Nash, he's seven. And Nash has been diagnosed with autism and intellectual disability. Hi, honey. What do you think? Hi. We're having fun at the fair, aren't we? Can we go back to Dad? Roman, what's your favorite thing to do at the fair? Uh, go down the big slide. Nice. You will probably go pretty fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> we often hear from families that they have not been able to explore the fair before as a family. If one child has some sensory processing issues, it makes it too difficult for them to go out into the community. This year, with the Sensory Friendly Morning, their whole family is able to enjoy the fair together. The Flores family is here this morning at the Iowa State Fair for Sensory Friendly Morning. What are you guys most looking forward to? ¿Qué es lo que quieren mirar más en la feria hoy? Ay, queremos mirar todo. Queremos mirar todo para que mi niño tenga una bonita experiencia. We want to see everything so that my son can have a beautiful experience. Pues es algo muy muy bonito, es algo muy especial porque la verdad que no es todo el tiempo, solamente se da una vez por año. Ya das una pausa para que ya. Este um it's something very special, it's something nice. Um it's only once a year. And Steve Steve, what's your favorite animal? I need a cock a doo! 
You know, I hope more and more venues incorporate sensory friendly environments, movie theaters, restaurants, anything outdoors as well. It just helps families explore and enjoy their community together. Today we're at the Decorated Diaper and the Diaper Derby. Um, they're two separate events. The Decorated Diaper, you have to be 24 months and younger. And we have three themes, a group theme, a creative diaper, and then the Iowa State Diaper, which is anything that reminds you of the Iowa State uh, Fair. Oh gosh, this is so much fun. There are so many creative moms and dads and grandparents and caregivers that um, really put a lot of thought into <laughs> decorating a diaper and making matching costumes to go with. Oh my gosh, I just love it. The diaper has to be visible, that's first and foremost. Uh, the creators can make them coordinate with the rest of the outfit, but the judges need to be able to see the diaper. And we have had everything from peacocks to the giant slide to corn dogs. So we've had just, people are just so creative. Iowans are so creative. And so it's been really fun to see every year all the different diapers that they come up with. Tie-dye family. Congratulations, Amelia. I tell you what, we did a big tie-dye project earlier this summer. It was so much fun, and we decided to try it on a diaper to see if it would work. Big sister Ramona is five, and she's the one who really did the tie-dye on this diaper. You know, we have a variety. So we have some people that just come out for the day and they may just throw some stickers on and they just want to be able to participate in an Iowa State Fair contest. And then we have other ones that have worked for months on some of these diapers. So it's our first place winner as Little Miss Lacey, our chicken. All those feathers and feet. I tell you, complete with flowers and honeycomb and wings in this contest also. Diaper Derby, so they have to be crawlers. They've got to crawl across the map, starting point to ending point. They'll have a coach at either end. We have heats. Whoever crosses the finish line gets to the other end first is our winner. On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> Sometimes the kids are all about that bottle at the other end and it's over in a flash. And then other times they're really more interested in making friends with the other babies on the mat. So they'll sit and visit and that always gets a good chuckle. There's nothing better than the Iowa State Fair. It's so much fun to, to be a part of it. Is it guava or lychee? Is it jicama or maybe it's just a rutabaga? If you think you know the difference, then the fruit and vegetable identification contest may be just for you. This is a fruit and vegetable ID contest and it's sponsored by Hy-Vee. And they uh, order in exotic fruits and vegetables. Now we do have some common ones for people to guess and see if they can identify all of the fruits and vegetables. There was like a line that formed before we started here. A lot of people get really excited about this. Oh yes, they are, and especially today. You know, they really were excited to start. Are any of these tripping you up? Yes. <laughs> 
Can you can you just like whisper into the mic what you think uh, like some of these are? Well, the 33 is a Rambutan. Okay, can you hear that? <laughs> this one, if I can figure out how to spell it, is a lychee, I think. This one reminds me of dragon fruit. I think it might be. This one over here reminds me of tofu, because it looks like tofu. This one reminds me of ginger. Um, so the one over there reminds me of cucumbers. But they're really tiny, so I don't think they are. I have participated many, many years. What keeps you coming back? Uh, the desire to win. <laughs> What's the best you've done? What's been a banner year? Uh, I've had first place for quite a few years, but last year I got beat. <laughs> so you got you got you got some uh, making up to do. I have a title to regain. <laughs> <laughs> what out here has really kind of like tripped you up a little bit? Number three. Number three. So what do you think it is? I think it's a sapote, but I think I'm wrong. Are there any that have been tripping you up? Yeah, number 27 in particular is, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> any guesses? Um, it could be a mutant celery root. I have no idea. What strategies do you have for trying to figure this out? Do you like touch them or smell or like, what are you, what are you working with here? Touch and smell definitely does work, yeah. Because different, different fruits smell differently, so yeah. I'm not sure I want to touch them mostly. I just sort of stare at them and uh, I use all that time in weird grocery stores trying to guess what things are based on the label I've yeah. seen before. So what are you doing here? I was smelling it. <laughs> Do you have any ideas what it might be? Um, I now believe it is not cinnamon uh, or ginger. Uh, so I'm going to guess that I don't know what it is. <laughs> Number 36 is pretty tough. I would challenge anyone to get that one right. Also 28. So did you make any guesses? We did. Um, one we guessed was an Asian gooseberry. I think we might be right on that, we'll see. <laughs> um, what else did we pick? Um, there was a Council Bluff apple, which uh, <laughs> may or may not be accurate on yeah. that one. But yeah. <laughs> Now it's your turn. Let's see what you know about the old Iowa State Fair with tonight's trivia question. How much was the admission to the first ever Iowa State Fair way back in 1854? Was it 10 cents, 25 cents, 40 cents, or 75 cents? I don't care. All of it sounds like a heck of a deal. We'll let you know the answer to that a little later in the show. Now, what can you do with two chairs, two handlebars, and a whole bunch of grit? Easy. It's the Monster Arm Wrestling. Three, two, one, wrestling. Get it, boys! Hang on to it! Hang on to it, man! I let him dive at the state fair. Three, two, one, press. It's the place where all the wrestlers from all over and all the tournaments that I run come and meet. We're a family. It's a three minute match. Every minute counts as a point. You get it on your side for 31 seconds out of a minute, you've got the point. Two out of three wins whether nobody pins.
I'm an extremely competitive person, so I love the competition. Whether I win, whether I lose, it's my favorite thing. This sport is 100% technique. So once you can get locked into that machine right and you get that technique down, that's when it comes to strength. When your competitor has the technique, is the best match. It's a great sport. There's not very many women wrestlers. We need more always. If anyone ever wants to try it, come on out. I'll teach you my techniques. Do you think we're going to be able to go more than 30 feet without you getting stopped? Mm, I hope so. You're, I hope we do. Are you Mr. State Fair now? I don't know if I'm Mr. State Fair, but I, I love the fair, and it's been so good to me. Uh, and it's a reunion every year, you know? So they, they call me Mr. State Fair, but I don't think I've, I've quite earned that. I mean, I'm not a Bill Riley. No. I'm not, you know, I'm just Mr. Ed. I, I've been asking people in the media center, I'm like, is there anybody who's been covering the fair longer as a TV person than Ed Wilson from Channel 13 in Des Moines? And they said, no, I don't think yeah. so. This is my 32nd year at the fair, as doing either the weather or covering it, so. 1988 was your first fair? It, uh, 1989. 89. I came in September of 88, so I just missed the fair. People stop and want to see you, Ed, at the fair. What does that mean to you when someone wants a picture? It means everything. It's so much fun. And what I have many pictures where somebody that I saw when they were a fifth grader or a five-year-old, and they're now grown, they bring up the picture of the two of us together back then, and then we do a redo. I have these side-by-side -side pictures that are hilarious. So it, it means so much. You can't pick, I'm guessing, a favorite anything here because you'd really upset the apple cart. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. But are there staples that you try to hit? Or maybe from a TV perspective, live shots or conversations you try to have each year? Well, my favorite thing is to be right out here where we are, right on the Grand Concourse. Uh, and when we would do when we do live weather out here, it, that's the genuine article. You find whatever is going on that day, and you can't fake it. It's just who they are. They have a blast, uh, especially during the evening hours. You know, during our evening shows. So that's my favorite thing is to meet people and to hear their stories. All right, Ed. We finally have one of these. You okay with a corn dog? Absolutely. All right. As, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make you pick a favorite. But are you one that can eat a corn dog at any time of day? Pretty much. Uh, and it's fitting, Ed, that as we're doing this, it's raining. What gives, Ed Wilson? Why, why, why does the weather guy ruin my plans all the time? Well, back here, I have my umbrella. It's not raining that hard, but if I would have left my umbrella, it would be downpour. <laughs> it's the weatherman's curse. When you don't have the right gear, you're going to get whatever you, you you're gonna get. You have done live shots, you've cooked pork up here. You probably, who do you, th who do you think flipped more pork chops up here than you? Well, I mean, other than the pork folks themselves, uh, one of my really good friends is Dana Wonkin. You know Dana? Mm -hmm. But he's here, you know, he's, he's from Northern Iowa as well, but he is here almost every single day. Hi guys! He's here almost every single day and standing between those you know, what is standing between those grills. Oh. There's not a hotter place. No. I mean, this is comfortable today. Today's wonderful. But, hi, how are you? But it's so hot on a hot day, and I, I don't know. I'd, I would drink plenty of water trying to prepare, and it would still, you could just feel it ooze away from you. When you stop and talk to people during a report, and you'll ask where they're from, and you hear somebody from out of state, do you smile? Oh, absolutely. Because they picked the state fair? I love that. Or we've had several times foreign exchange students. They're coming, they're just getting to Iowa. They're gonna spend a year with his family and they bring them to the Iowa State Fair. What an, what, what a day uh, in inauguration to get into this thing and just be completely hit in the face with Iowa. This is as Iowa as it gets, but I love that too. So it's, yeah, I love it when people from other states come here. Yeah. Ed Wilson, I greatly appreciate the time. Enjoy your corn dog. Oh, thank you, my friend. And enjoy your fair. Good to see you. This has been so much fun, Paul. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. I miss working with you, but I love watching you. I appreciate that a ton. Uh, Thanks, Ed. Great. It is. How many tickles does it take to make
make an octopus laugh? I don't know, how many? Tentacles. What did the duck say when it was buying chapstick? Put it on my bill. Why did Santa do karate? Cause he wears a black belt. You're gonna see a lot of young people who are here to have fun. I watch PBS Kids all the time. And who have either made up a joke or asked their grandpa to tell them a joke or they've gone online to find a favorite joke to tell. I got this joke book from my grandma um, for Christmas. We need to begin with some volunteer judges. Four different categories, your first impression, last impression, presentation, and then the overall. What do you call a snowman in Florida? I don't know, what do you call a snowman in Florida? Water. Oh, water. I'm a retired pediatric nurse, so um, I like kids. They're fun. And they can be awful funny. Or not. <laughs> what do you call a pig who knows karate? I don't know. What do you call it? Pork chop. Ah, pork chop. So there was this magician from Mexico, and he was doing his last act. He said, on three, I will disappear. Uno, dos, and he disappeared without a trace. What do you call a cat that likes candy? A yeah. Kit Kat. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies. My grandpa was very competitive. He would always try to beat me at everything. Baseball, checkers, who could eat the most corn dogs? But I'll never forget the last words he said to me just before he passed away. With his last breath, he said, staring contest. Ready, set, go. What did one toilet say to the other? I don't know what. You look a little flushed. Knock, knock. Who, no, sir? Iowa State. Iowa State who? Exactly, go Hawks. First place, we'd like for you to tell your joke one more time. So my uncle came back from the army the other day, you know? Yeah. And he brought back one of those hand grenades, you know? Yeah. And he pulled the pin and he got scared and he threw it and it went under the outhouse, you know? Yeah. And grandma was in the outhouse and the grenade went off and blew the outhouse to bits. Oh my. And grandma came out and said, Woo, I'm glad I didn't do that in the house. Wow. Every year we'll go on vacation and we rent a van. Me and Grandma, the other year, we were on our iPad looking up jokes. I like that they're really funny and they make everybody laugh. Much of the spirit of the Iowa State Fair comes from the contests and competitions. Let's see who some of the winners are. We've reached the halfway point of tonight's show, and it's time to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll see some fine examples of what the State Fair is all about, like the inspiring show of teamwork in building a Habitat for Humanity house, the intensity of the big wheel races, and the prestige of the sale of champions. The State Fair celebration continues, and we plan to finish our Saturday night strong. So come right back for more State Fair fun on Iowa PBS. 
Hey, it's down to the wire at the Riley stage. The championships, they're tomorrow. Here are the young Iowans advancing. forget we'll bring you the talent championships here on Iowa PBS Sunday August 21st at 8 p.m. Welcome back everyone the Habitat for Humanity team and volunteers spent the first nine days of the fair building a home let's check it out Well, we are at the State Fair, and this is right before we're ready to get started on building a house at the fair. Uh, we really are starting with just uh, the floor piece in place here, and uh, the first day of the fair, we'll raise the first wall. On three, one, two, three. And then uh, by day nine, we'll have the house finished. It'll look like a finished home, and then the last couple of days of the fair, that people will be able to tour the Habitat for Mandy home. This is day two of our construction build. So today our goal is to have all the trusses stood. We want to sheet both sides of the roof. We also have installed the windows. We have one more door to install and we also have siding going on today. So typically uh, a house would take us about three months to build. This is my first attempt at building a house in eight days. So we typically take four weeks to frame roof and side, and then our trades, plumbing, heating and cooling, and electrical, insulation, drywall, come in and do their thing. Take about four weeks to do that process, and then we come back in on the tail end and take another four weeks to trim it out. And I've never done this before, but I'm super excited, and we've got a great start at it. Uh, we had about 20 today, and uh, we're also going to have another crew of almost up to 20 coming later in the week. It is a great team building experience for our staff to be doing this. And what's great is you come in and your group works for, you know, three hours, four hours, and they can see the change that's happened to the building. You know, it doesn't look like the picture did when I took when we started. So I think, I think that really brings joy to people as well. You mind if I ask what you're doing? Well, I have to get a plumbing inspection, so I'm putting an air test on it. So that way, the inspector from Des Moines is coming and has to hold a certain uh, PSI for a certain amount of time um, so that they know it's airtight. I believe we're on day six, and today we are installing cabinets, doing trim and casing. It's insane. I have never built a house this fast. All of our trades have come in and knocked things out that usually take a week to do, they did in a day, and that's just been really amazing to see all the teamwork that it could all happen as fast as it is. Today is day nine, uh, day nine of the Greater Des Moines Habitat build. It's surreal uh, to be able to see a home completed in about a week will be moved just east of the fairgrounds, only a few blocks away. Everybody did something extraordinary this week, all the way from our volunteers to all of our trades. I feel very proud that our team was able to accomplish um, something that's just unheard of. Can't really walk a city block at the Iowa State Fair without passing multiple food vendors. We wanted to check in with some of the vendors run by the farmers and ranchers who produce the goods they're selling. We actually started at the fairgrounds in, in 
1985. Right at the same spot, we had a tent. And 38 years later, we kind of have it figured out, you know, pretty well. It, it runs pretty smooth. We can run seven, 8,000 people through a day. Is part of your job not just to feed people, but to educate the people who kind of come through about what you do? It is. A lot of them maybe are agriculture people that come through, but not everybody. There's a lot of city people, and oh, they probably don't learn a whole lot where they're here, but, but it's available if they want to, you know. Somebody came in, I think it was yesterday, and is prime rib beef? Uh, yes, it is beef. What's the silliest question you've ever had from someone? We have a lot of people walk up and want to know where we get our lamb and as, as they're looking into the sheep barn and stuff. And, and no, we're not taking those lambs right now. You know, people see lamb, they're like, oh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, we had blah, blah, blah. And, and it's not like that. It's really not if you prepare it right and stuff. And um, we're trying to just to get that out there, show people that lamb is another, you know, red meat, that it is a very good meat. The number one question we get is what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, since we're serving mostly eggs, we say the egg came first. A lot of people don't realize that Iowa is the number one egg producing state in the country. Generally, we use about 50 to 60 tubs of ice cream, three gallon tubs of ice cream out of this booth every day. So add that all up and it's, it's quite a lot of ice cream. Each day, uh, the Dairy Science Club at Iowa State brings over some dairy cows and they have milking demonstrations. So visitors at the fair can come watch how their milk is produced. There's nothing compares to real dairy milk. Do you kind of feel like part of your job here is to not just serve people food, but educate them? Yes, very much so. And that's what uh, the Iowa Pork Producers is about. It's promoting the product and promoting the product is educating the public how healthy that product is, how affordable it is, and how safe it is, and how important it is pork production is to the Iowa economy, too. Is it easier being here or being on the farm? Or where would you rather be? Oh, I, for the short days that we come down here, we usually come down here two or three days a year, or we at the fair two or three days a year, and I enjoy them. But at the end of those three days, I'm happy to go home and deal with pigs. Which job was harder, doing this or being on the farm? Well, this was because you didn't know what you're doing. You kind of knew what you're doing and you're feeding cattle. You know, down, down here, we started, we didn't know anything about running a food stand. This is a different animal down here. Keep in mind many of these vendors use proceeds to help support their industries or other charitable causes. Be sure to stop by and say hello. I'm Keegan Jones. I do the gardening side of FFA. There's not a lot of people that do that. Everybody's kind of animals and tractors, so I thought I'd start doing a garden, and it seems to be doing pretty well out here. And I just enjoy having the fresh fruits and vegetables that come out of here all, all year long. And it's just, it's a win-win overall. I started FFA my freshman year and I've been in it ever, every year. I know this garden, it started in 2013 or 2014. It's just real small. My sister got involved. She's two years older than me. So she brought me into it basically. I helped her for a couple years before and then I took it over after my sophomore year. And it's only gotten bigger and better ever since. I'm pretty sure this garden out here, it got started because the historical society, they didn't like mowing all the area. So they asked Cooper, our FFA teacher, if he wanted to start a garden out here and he said yeah. And it became part of me and I just enjoyed doing it. Well, we grow everything you can imagine. We have cabbage, broccoli, all different types of squash, cucumbers, beans, peas, tomatoes. We have different sizes of tomatoes. We have different spiciness levels of uh, peppers. Uh, in the back, we have potatoes, several different varieties of them. We have onions running along here. We have our strawberry plants down here. They're pretty nice. 
the community around us. Uh, I feel like they saw how good we were doing with our garden out here and how, we were, how I was winning at the state fair all these years. And they decided to join together, make this garden over here. It's doing really good itself too. And so this is my FFA garden and that's their community garden. We don't, we don't get in each other's gardens, but we work together. We help each other out if we need any help or anything like that. For us, we're only a family of four. We end up just taking what we need. We have uh, people that we share this with that help us with the garden as well. They can come in and take what they need. We've donated to the uh, assisted living homes out here in Nevada, and we donated to the high school even last year, and it's just, it's nice seeing all the, the faces light up whenever you donate all the food, and yeah, it's just, it, it feels good on the inside. Going through FFA, I just, I submit uh, all my vegetables uh, at the fair. Last year, I ended up getting reserve champion overall, and I got grand champion in the uh, decorative box. I believe that people, more people should get into gardening. It's a great thing. It helps out communities and families, and you can donate to anybody and everybody to help them out too. I like doing it because it makes me enjoy being outside more and it helps out my family and others. So it's just, I just enjoy doing it more than whatever I receive in return. I could just, I could get recognition. I could not, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It's just, I'm a gardener either way. And now for the answer to tonight's trivia question, which was, how much was the admission to the first ever Iowa State Fair? 10 cents, 25 cents, 40 cents, or a whopping 75 cents? The answer is 25 cents. And the first Iowa State Fair, it was in Fairfield, Iowa, back in 1854. And it was also held in October. There's always something to see on the Grand Concourse. This time, it's for the kids. On your mark, get set, go! Big Wheel Competition is part of the Iowa Parks and Recreation Day here at the lovely Iowa State Fair. As a matter of fact, this is our 40th anniversary. Last year would have been 40th, but because of COVID, we didn't have the State Fair in 2020. So we're very excited about having so many different events here and the hundreds of thousands of people here at the Iowa State Fair. Go! Go! We represent 110 to municipal parks and recreation departments throughout the state, and we've got about 80 volunteers here today. All in all, it's the IPRA Day at State Fair is for everybody and anybody, regardless of your age or your abilities. So we're very excited about being here, and we're very excited about being here on the Grand Concourse. out there. But I got bought the wheel. 
really a back wheelie. Oh, you popped a wheelie? A back wheelie. Wow. Hey. Go, go, go. Because they're fun pets, I like it a lot. I personally love rabbits because it's just basically my second favorite animal and they're easy to take care of. Um, probably the uniqueness. Showing rabbits is probably more unique than a lot of other species because of our 50 breeds. The main thing that we're doing this weekend is we're showing our rabbits. We have purebred rabbits. Most of us that are showing are members of the American Rabbit Breeders Association and we are actually a sanctioned show, so our, um, all of our grand champion points and everything will count. We have so many activities going on at the Iowa State Fair that we really have to stagger the events so we can get them all, all finished in the 11 days. So um, in the past, we've done some rabbit agility and rabbit hopping. Tonight, we are doing the largest rabbit competition, and I believe we have six entries. We're gonna weigh those rabbits in and find out who is the largest rabbit in the Iowa State Fair. Good evening, welcome to the largest rabbit competition at the 2022 Iowa State Fair. Thanks everybody for coming. I know we had some really terrible weather earlier, but uh, it seems to have cleared off a little bit now. Um, we have six entries this year in the largest rabbit competition. We're just gonna kinda call them up here one at a time and get a weight on these guys. My dad got me into rabbits in the fourth grade. Started with one and you know, the saying rabbits breed like rabbits is sometimes true. So, you know, we quickly went from one to very many. So do we have Adeline Basket out here? No, it was definitely the girls saying they wanted to raise rabbits. I like that it gives them some responsibility and it gets them outside every day and they, they have to be accountable to something else that's living. Right at 15 pounds. 15 pounds, one ounce. That's the thing about raising rabbits, they change so fast in the matter of days, they can change um, drastically. So, you know, one can lose pounds in a few days. So it's, competition is always different every year. He is weighing in at 15.2 pounds. Well, we start him off on like a banana a day with some cucumbers, half a watermelon, and then we feed him his typical grain and then sprinkle in some oats. All right, next up we have the Bellman's second entry. And this, Sadie. this is Sadie, who is also a Flemish giant. 16.98. Well, three years ago, um, my granddaughter was able to show rabbits in 4-H, so as long as we had to come out here, um, Tom had said, which is my husband, said, you know, we have a rabbit that weighs 22 pounds, you might as well take it along and enter in the biggest rabbit competition. I said, okay. Thumper. This is Thumper, and Thumper is a Flemish giant as well. Oh boy, you guys. 18.9 pounds. It's just kind of a, a family thing. We all get together and go. You, know, you got your stock car races, you got your horses, you got your dogs, your goats, pigs. So we do rabbits for a hobby. The first animal is in the ring at the 2022 Sale of Champions. It's taking place here inside the Media Center. It is a big deal. It's one of the biggest fundraisers for a whole lot of scholarships. Let's find out how all the winners do. It's Avery Shalla from Riverside, Iowa. She has the grand champion 4-H market steer. Yes, 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 yes. Look at that, $135,500. That's a new record for all species. Lainey DeVries from Red Oak, Iowa. 
she's bringing in the reserve grand champion 4-H market steel. Uh, so Intense bidding brings in a new record, $65,500. Fairway and another new record, right? Ah! Here comes Jax Pryor from Woodbine. He's bringing in the grand champion 4-H market heifer. I am 7,000, now 75, now 8,000. So, $7,000 right here. $37,000 for Jax Pryor. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Grayson Belcher from Blakesburg, bringing in the reserve grand champion 4-H market heifer. So, $45,000. Another record, $45,500. That's a new record for the reserve champion. Grand champion FFA market hog. Here's Jillian Woodruff from Moreland. Congratulations, Jillian, and thank you, Rodney. Final bid? $40,000. What a sale. The reserve grand champion FFA market hog, Shay Lynn Becker out of Kyoto. $7,000 on him. When it's all said and done, $27,000. Grand champion 4-H market hog. Brody Pryor from Woodbine. His brother Jax was in earlier to set a triplets, and it's $22,500. SGI, thank you, Ty and company. The reserve grand champion, 4-H Market Hog. It's Haley Lampy out of Fort Madison. So $22,000 on him. The bid for Lampy's Hog? $22,000. purchase of the reserve grand champion. Grand champion, FFA market lamb. Here's Cade Moon out of Indianola. $8,500. Thank you to Elanco Animal Health with some. Reserve grand champion, FFA market lamb. Phoebe Sanders from Eagle Grove enters the ring. $19,500, that's a new record. Now time for the grand champion 4-H Market Lamb. It's Sam Schmillen from Marcus. Sold him $21,500. Sam's Lamb? $21,500, a new record. Two, the all-time high-selling market lamb, 21,000. The reserve grand champion 4-H market lamb. It's Colby Williams from Mabel, Minnesota. Hold him, $6,000 on him. $6,000 for Williams. Rule supplements. Congratulations, Colby Williams, and thank you to Rule Supplements. Grand champion, FFA Meat Goat. It's Max Petzenhauser from Roland. Sold him $10,000 on him, $10,000. And that goat fetches $10,000. Lupta, USA, okay. Congratulations, Max. Grand champion, 4-H Meat Goat. Cash Vogley from Lenox, South Dakota. Here we go. Sold him. $6,500. Congratulations, thousand right here, now 15. Now in the ring, the Hoigs. First it's JC, she has the grand champion 4-H market broiler. So at $8,000 on her. JC, $8,000. And Sister Rachel has the reserve grand champion. Sold it, $6,500 on it. And Rachel brings $6,500. $481,500. Okay. Final total sets a record, $481,500. What a day. Congratulations to all. Congratulations to everybody. Well, as they say in the biz, that's a wrap. Our final evening of Iowa State Fair coverage, it's in the can. And being a professionally trained television expert, I can confidently say 
There were no bloopers this year. Nothing. Really? No, not the bloopers. Three, two, one. Tonight we'll get start. Now the, the oops, sorry. We're celebrating fairs. Sorry, cowboy mounted shooting. That's not good, Bill. <laughs> In the more than 50 years we've been covering the Iowa, sorry, Heritage Village, Village, Heritage Village. Sorry, 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 sorry. Do it over. Sorry. It's the lacquer. Your daily reporter, live at the State Fair. Is that all right? Well, our next seg, what a segue. I should have said that. Sorry. No, I shouldn't hold the mic. This whole thing's a blooper. All right, we'll do it one more time. Three, two, one. You messed up my counting. I practiced hard on my counting. And with that, we've come to the close of our fair 2022 nightly programs. But the Iowa State Fair Fund lives on in the digital realm. You can relive the magic by checking out our website, our YouTube channel, in addition to our Facebook and Instagram pages. You'll find lots of great State Fair fun. And there are several ways that you can engage with us about our beloved Iowa State Fair, anytime and anywhere. Thanks again for joining me on this wonderful Iowa State Fair journey. It's truly an honor to be a part of this incredible tradition. From all of us here at Iowa PBS, I'm Bill Riley, and we know you had fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2022 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... For more than 110 years, EMC Insurance Companies has served policyholders, independent agents, and local communities, providing insurance products for both business and life. Count on EMC. Caring for pigs is not just an individual job. It truly does take a village to put a safe, healthy food on your table and keep farming sustainable.